What's going on, Bizanos? V here. So today I want to talk about Ash Blossom. Everyone was like, no, we're not getting Ash Blossom. Uh, we got screwed one, this one time we got screwed. Ergo, no Ash Blossoms. Even though we did get a hand trap previously, we're not getting a hand trap. <laughs> here we are, we know we're getting Ash Blossom as a reprint in the common in the new Structure Jack Soul Burner. Coming out. My dad's birthday, February 14th, it's pretty awesome. And Valentine's Day for all you suckers out there. Uh, and yeah, everyone's excited about Ash Blossom. But even those who are complaining about Ash Blossom, about the fact that we might not get Ash Blossom, now that we know we're getting Ash Blossoms, those complainers just switch the storyline over to, yeah, but they're probably gonna hit it. <laughs> it's so annoying because it's like, dude, just fucking, just, just accept it. Except, those are the guys you give a million dollars to, and it's like, well, I gotta carry this? This is heavy. This is ridiculous. I gotta carry this? You know how heavy that is? It's just you can't make them happy. And I posted in my YouTube community tab, just leave, anyone who complains about Ash Blossom after we know it's finally coming out so everybody can get it, if they're still complaining, just go, oh, that's fine, that's fine, and just never be near them ever again. You want to hang out afterwards? I mean, Ash Blossom's getting banned, but you want to hang out? No, I got literally anything else to do. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, this does affect the price of Ash Blossom currently in the market. I waited a full 24 hours to get on top of this market watch because I want to see what happened with the market within 24 hours. I want to see how fast it can move. And to be honest with you, today is Sunday. Come tomorrow, it's going to move even faster. I think we'll see Ash Blossom prices declining up until Wednesday where it will either it will stop and actually either level out or start increasing. And that's because of the... um. The upcoming YCS. Now, looking at the other Ash Blossoms, we're already seeing the decline. Uh, Super Rare Ash Blossom is $25 in the market, but we're already seeing it hit about $22, $22.5. Ash Blossom Enjoy Spring Ultra Rares be about $32 roughly. I make seeing about $27.5. Secret Rare Ash Blossoms, and this is where it gets this is where it gets really intricate. For a lot of you players that want to know about Secret Rares, this is where it really matters. Because the other two will decline. But Secret Rare Ash Blossoms, market price showing to be about $46. Unlimited? Are about 40s. First editions are still roughly around 45 and a half. Now, if we want to ask ourselves what's going to happen to Ash Blossom's price after the common reprint happens, well, a couple of things can factor in. One, the the the, the it's coming out with Salomon Greats, which in my opinion is going to be a tier one deck. I think it's really really good, um, and I think it's going to be a tier one deck. And I think that everyone's going to be buying that. So, even though Ash Blossom's price is going to decline for commons, because the, the initial pre-sell price will probably be about 6, they'll decline to about maybe 3, so if they can hold it at 3s, and after a while, they might go back up, depending on how the meta shifts, the balance, all that jazz. But even with all that said, I still think Ash Blossom commons will go higher in value, but looking at the other versions, Cigarette Ash Blossom Joy Spring, its settle price is going to be around $40 for first edition. That's where it'll settle. And the reason why is because Maximum Crisis and Secret Rare Ash Blossoms are just that much higher, higher to, harder to obtain. And these cards uh, are the highest version. Ultimately, when Ash Blossom and Joy Spring comes out as an ultimate rare and a new Konami exclusive pack, this will decline down in value. Hit a price point roughly around $30, maybe even $25. These will decline. This version will hit $10 for the Super Rare. Inevitably. This version will hit anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars. Inevitably, these will be their price points. So if you're holding an ultra rare ash, if you're holding a super rare ash, I would recommend you sell it and wait for the commons. If you're holding a secret rare ash, well, you have until an ultimate rare reprint, which in my opinion is going to happen. We already have Ghost Ogre, we have Joel Lockbird, and we're seeing their value spike high and val spike high after they came out, not when they first came out. And we're gonna. This is what's gonna happen with Ash Blossom. Your price point is going to start the dwindling the minute you your players realize Konami's making an ultra version of this card. By the way, gorgeous OT if it comes out. Um, next guys, look at that OTS OTS. Uh, Stratos is actually holding roughly around 35s, down from a 30, 38 dollar market price. A, a week ago it was around 40. A week before that it was around 45. And here's what I'm gonna say about this card. Hold it still. It's gonna get bought out. It's inevitable. You can sell if you want to, make a quick buck if you pull it in your pack, it'd be pretty nice. Or you can hold it and wait for its inevitable buyout. Whether it be a collector's buyout, hero players gone crazy, dot buyout, future expectations of heroes doing anything in the meta, which we know they will do anything in the meta, because we have past roller coasters of the market watch, looking at them going up in value, down in value, up and down, down in value. This will get bought out. Mark my words, hold on to your straddles, boys. 
Suzuka is going lower in value. Current price point is roughly around $30, $31. Market price is going to be around $33. And that's because every Skeshuggle player is holding a grenade that may or may not go off heavily. It's going to go off. Okay? But we don't know how bad. And look at Suzuka, which is $31. We don't know. If we're going to get the complete OCD treatment, we're talking one Kagari, one uh, Engage, one Widow Anchor, or we're going to see something to the mo to the first OCD treatment, which was to Engage, to Widow Anchor, which makes Skashuk as playable. My opinion, I think we're going to get the, f the second one, in which Engage will go to two, Widow Anchor will go to two, hell, I wish multi roll got hit, it should be multi roll instead of Widow Anchor or Engage, because that card's insanely good. But I think it's going to be the light hit. And the reason why is because Konami's not done with strikers. They made two OTS Ultimate Striker cards. If they want to promote any more OTS Striker cards or even Striker cards in general, like the new Earth, what is it, Earth one, I believe, the, the Life Gaining one, the Time Ruling one, if they want to do anything like that, well, of course, Konami's going to, you know, they, they can't make strikers terrible. They're going to have to make them semi good, semi decent. And I think, the first, I think a light bandit hit would do that. Likers is still value because we're getting a new Strixus card in Savage Strike. I don't think the card's good. I think after the card and after Savage Strike's fully been out for a while, we're going to see this card go down in value. So if you're holding it right now, you might want to consider pulling it out or using it, I guess, for a deck core. OTS Storm Pack 8 has Drone Lockbird currently at $60. Last week, it was roughly around $44. I, said, I, said, I was telling everybody to get it. The market price is going to be off $48. It's now at $60. It's going to go higher. Limited markets, limited values on the marketplace. This is going to tell me and tell you guys. There's not many. You get players who want to get this card. It's going to go higher. This card will hit around Ghost Ogre price points. It's already hitting near, which is way above where it was last week. Around, I, think, I believe it was around the $44 price point. It's only going to go higher. And that's what's going to happen with Every hand trap it's gonna come out it's gonna go low and then it goes back high because limited amount and a new OTS pack came out Kagari another one it's around twenty three dollars the weird thing about Kagari and Shizuka by the way these two if strikers are hit lightly they will go up in value you get players will realize that strikers aren't hit heavily and they'll come back around and grab the striker cards it's still a great deck and they will pick up Kagari and they will pick up Ulti Shizuka so these prices will go higher if they're given the light treatment Scapegoat's currently around $23, nearest market price. Um, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> anyway, uh, looking at Prank Kids, I think Prank Kids kind of know they're done. Or oh, I think Yu-Gi-Oh players are less interested in playing Prank Kids with the release of cards like Salomon Great and every, every, all, all the new cards in uh, Savage Strike. The Yu-Gi-Oh players just don't want to care about much about Prank Kids and Hidden Summers, which is a set that we just recently got and we're just already done with. Prank Kids Place was already hitting a price point of around $20 when it first came out and sold some meta play, and now it's nobody cares about it anymore. And we're seeing Prank Kids Place hit around $12.50. Prank Kids Doodle Duel is still around $5, so that's a thing. Uh, up next, Madolce is being bought out. Now, specifically Hoot Cake. I wanted to focus on Hoot Cake. Um, this was pointed out in the Yu Gi Oh! Mark Watch Facebook group. But look at 2014 Hoot Cakes. They're around $2 to $3. Almost hitting near $4 for 2014. For the Lord Attack on Galaxy Hoot Cakes, market price should only be about $280. It is going up in value, even though price is showing stabilization. We're seeing a uh, near mints, uh, unlimited, near mints about threes. There's one over here for like playing around twos. First edition is one over here for threes. After that, once gone, it's hitting almost at four dollars for hoot cakes. It's starting to go higher in value, and Madolce in general are going higher in value. I mean, look at Magellan. She's bought out at thirty dollars when she was holding twenty dollars last week. Market price still not changing up to it. Uh, Thirty-three first edition light you played. Madolce Angeli, which price point is twenty-nine dollars for twenty fifteen mega pack. Madolce Angeli from Primal Origins is about $20. There's a real big discrepancy in this one, but to be honest with you, all this means is you can place going to buy the original print versions, which they kind of want anyway, because there's more of these prices listed, and then it'll come back around and then finish off Angeli. It's getting bought out in value. Pudding is going high in value. Tiramisu's not the same, actually. Um, <laughs> Chocolate a la mode is actually coming down because it originally had a buyout, but still higher than the market price. Why am I showing you all this? Why am I showing you all this Madolce Spice? Well, Here's my conclusion. Two things. One, I'm going to keep my Madolce deck. I'll be straight up with you guys, 100%. I'm going down with the ship, and I'll, and I'll come back to that in a second. But I'm keeping Madolce. I'm going to have my Madolce deck profile. I think Madolce is a fun deck. I don't think it's meta enough. I think it's good. I think it can be meta. But I don't think it's meta enough, and that's why I think if you have Madolce cards, if you have all these cards, I recommend you pull out right now. $30 for Magic Line, even though because it's a solo print and return to Duelist, yeah, it's pretty good. 
I don't think it's going to be worth it to be uh, going any higher in value. I don't think any of these prices are going to go any higher in value. And I highly recommend you sell these cards. I don't think you should hold these cards. I think my dodges aren't as good as other decks out there in the meta. And if I'm wrong, no big deal. I'm wrong. I guess you lose out a lot of money. But you don't think Konami's not going to want to reprint my dodge cards if it wasn't become meta? I think it's going to. But I don't think my dodges will become meta. I will build a deck still and I'll make it as competitive as possible. And if I'm wrong, cool. I have a meta deck. If I'm right, well, you made a lot of money. And I went down the ship. Not a big deal, but I just want to throw it out there for you guys and give you a word of warning before I move on with talking about Madoches. Because $30 Magic Lines, it's, it's, it's not going to get any better than that. $33, it's not going to get any better than that. Okay, uh, I'm up, uh, up next to Trudeau, the Lost Dragon, Frijon. So Shrew is hitting a price point roughly around seven dollars, which is a little bit lower than its market price, but still relatively high. The funny thing about Strudo is you should sell this card as soon as possible. It's currently really good right now and heavily used in like a Thunder Dragon variants. But the thing is, uh, we're about to have a new set come out with new meta. The meta's gonna shift. We're gonna get a ban list. This card is going to be useless soon. I still think Thunder Dragons will see meta play post uh, February February fourteenth, or when we get our new ban list. By the time that time, we'll definitely have our new ban list. We'll definitely have uh, a Salmon get some meta. I don't think it's good enough, and I think with the shooter's price currently being roughly around seven dollars, it is the best time to sell this card. TG Rush Rhino is also about $24. After that one's gone, it's going to be hitting about $29 to $30 for a TG Rush Rhino. The Battle Park Price Cars one. If you saw my previous market watch, there was some listed up on Troll and Toad. Um, they were like fours or to sixes on Troll and Toad. I forgot which one it was, but it was very cheap. You got that? You actually made some money if anyone wants to buy Rush Rhinos. Mythical Beast uh, Jackal King is another card that's currently market price is holding roughly around eleven dollars. Price is showing it going on a slow incline. Looking at it, guys, it's thirteen dollars for Mythical Beast Jackal King. If you guys been watching my channel for even a decent amount of time, you'd realize I was constantly promoting Mythical Beast, mostly specifically uh, Pendulums, as a deck that's a really good rogue contender. With that said, sell this card. Get rid of this card. Don't touch it. Reason why is we're getting more pendulum support in the spellcaster structure deck. With that said, I think Konami's going to be looking to hit pendulum again. But you gotta realize, guys, Konami doesn't want old decks doing new meta things unless they have ways to make sales. Now, Konami's not going to kill pendulums. No, 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 no. But they are going to hurt them, so pendulums will not get in the way of the current meta decks until the star deck comes out, and the star deck might have some cards to make pendulums meta again. That's what Konami wants to do, because they want to sell the new pendulum meta, pendulum spellcaster stuff, whatever is coming out in that structure deck, or any other future support of pendulums. They can't sell that if they had their old pendulum stuff that they, that they, for the most part, made their money on and don't care about anymore. One can make a great argument about Mythical Beast Shaco Kane, how it could be reprinted. I get that, I, and I agree to a, to a certain extent. But what I will say is, Konami wants to make money on newer cards. That's where the money is, not reprinting older cards. There's some money in reprinting older cards, more money in reprinting newer cards. Though this will make a great secret rare. Anyway, guys, what I'm trying to say about this is, I think Pendulum's about to get hit really hard in the ban list. Sell your Pendulums, or if you want to go down the ship, it's not a big deal. Unlike Madoches, where it's all, I'm losing, I'll tell you right now, I'm, I know I'm going to be losing a lot of money in Madoches. Pendulums, it costs me $60 to make the deck max rarity. It's it's okay. I'm okay. We're going. I'm it's okay. It's okay. You can stab me. It's fine. All right, guys. I'm next. Uh, Valkyries Rune Hildy is actually going down in value a little bit. Market price is showing to be about eleven dollars. So it is roughly around its current market value, but price is showing it going down in value. And that's and the reason why is because the interest in buying Valkyries have just pretty much ceased. We are getting new Valkyrie cards with future supports, future releases. But I think all Yu-Gi-Oh players, I just realized. Wait a minute, Valkyries. Hmm. Sounds a lot like Noble Knights 2.0. Konami, are you going to give us a gorgeous looking Valkyrie playmat that we're going to fawn over? And I mean, you might get some more new suckers like you did with Noble Knights back in the day, that white chest in Italy. That was fun times. But no, for the most part, Valkyries are just not doing anything. We knew they were not doing anything. We knew that for a good amount of time. And now that the Valkyries are out and about, yeah, I think we're just doing Valkyries. Um, but some people still got suckered in and Valkyrie still maintains a high price like Vern Hildy, bringing $11 a, a card. I just don't think this is going to be doing anything with the meta. I, will, I wish it would. It'd be kind of cool, but it's not going to, let's be honest. Uh, I'm next looking at OTS Tournament Pack 9. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Tricksters in general. So I talk about Tricksters and how the fact that they're going to be getting a new card or cards. We don't know uh, multiple cards, but we know one new card in the new set. They're getting a version of their field spell, even though they have a really good field. Like, you have a great field spell, but you're getting another field spell for Tricksters. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, why that's a thing. Like, like, if I'm going to be straight honest with you, that makes no sense. 
Looking at Likers right now, that's why it's currently holding its $30 price point. It is slowly going down and will continue to go down after the release of Savage Strike. I believe this card price will tank heavily. With that said, if you do have to check Likers, I would highly recommend you sell it because it's just not good to have it right now and it's going to be going down in value. You just lost some money. Looking at Trickster Reincarnation, still been holding its $6 price point. Both versions, Crystal Heart, the Magazine Ultra Rare is roughly around 7 A little higher than this market price because of you know, it's a couple of Trickster plays out there. Don't get, don't get me wrong. I love Tricksters. In fact, I'll go. Also, I'll be honest as, as to tell you, um, I don't have ulti likers, but I do have just about every other Trickster card because I do like the deck a lot. I like playing it. It is fun. Pure Tricksters is fun as hell. But that's where it is. It's fun for me. It's not competitive. I can't play Tricksters competitively because it's not as good as what the meta currently is. And that's the way I feel about it. Especially when Trickster Reincarnation, Dragon, uh, not Dragon Rules, but, you know, Thunder Dragon Rulers. Anyway, uh, up next, guys. Brother of the Fire Fist, Horse Prince. Now, if you are looking to play Salomon Grades, which I've been co slowly covering this whole video, which I'll you know sum around to right now. If you are looking to play Salomon Grades, I would recommend you pick one of these cards up. It's currently $4,000 on market price. Price chance showing it going lower in value because not many people are playing it. But when you look over here, Unlimited Nimitz is near $5. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, Unlimited Nimitz is 5 Fish and Nimitz is 10, 10, 19 cents more. Um, so you can do it like that way. It's about 5 bucks for Brother of the Fire Fist Horse Prince. And if you're asking why V, well, this card helps you bring out more fire monsters, specifically a level 3 fire monster from your deck. You can't put someone level 5 or highest, but if you play Salomon Greats, you're already scoffing because you don't do it. Also, you can use it with Red, Red, Red Resonator. See, Sarah did that. Red Resonator. Okay. Uh, with Red Resonator, uh, when it's cards normal summon, you can spell someone with low for a lower monster from your hand. Um, and you can target one face of a monster on the field and gain light points, which is kind of cool to do. Um, version of Red, Red Resonator has grown exponentially. Uh, market price is going to be about $1.65. And, yeah, it's hitting almost near $2 for, uh, for the rare version. Now, if you want the common version, no big deal. It came out in High Speed Rise as a common. It's about $0.75 cents still for a common. Uh, also, if you want a rotor for the deck, it's called Resonator Core. The rotor for the deck. Resonator Core, which comes out rare, uh, is roughly around $0.17. Cents. Depends how many you want. You can do it like a 2-3 ratio. Um, also comes out common if you want it as well in a couple of the printings, so you have the opportunity to get that as well. Now, another card that's really good for uh, this deck is True King Agni Mazadad Vanquisher guy. Um, current price point is increasing in value. We're seeing it hit around 350, 340, 350. It quickly spikes high in value. In fact, when we, when we finally get two, which is the multiples, it's up at 370, it's in near fours at the bottom of page one. The reason I want to say this is because if you can destroy two other five monsters in your hand or face in your, in your field, special summon this guy and banish one monster in your opponent's field or graveyard. This is huge. This is huge against the mirror match. Because you can banish your graveyard, so you get banished of some of their fire monsters, so they can, you know, I'll beat you, I'll grind you, or I'll beat you. This is huge because he's a 2900, which is higher than Th uh, Thunder King Colossus. Uh, and also, he could banish a Thunder King Colossus and or Titan. Like, this is a big deal, and this card is pretty good. Also good against banishing Sky Strikers, or in the mirror match. This card might actually start seeing more play, even though it's not seeing play in the OCG. And yeah, I think it's going to start seeing play in general. So I would highly recommend you pick these cards up. They are going higher in value. In fact, looking at True King, at that guy, um, the Dark Illusion version is roughly around 350 The Megatons is hitting near $3 as well. So they're both going high in value because I think Yu-Gi-Oh players who are not telling nobody anything are seeing this and just slowly grabbing these cards, just putting them in a deck or whatever. Exposed, boys. Here's what it is. Also, if you want to play Mermels, here's the water version. It also starting to see some playing Mermels. If you, if anyone anyone besides me uh, looks at Mermel Decker files, um, you will see that this card's actually seeing a lot more play because it's a pretty big beat stick and has pretty cool effects. Yu-Gi-Oh. And the last thing we'll talk about is Soul Fusion. And let's see what's happening right now as far as like Thunder Dragons or everything within the meta. Let's see what's going down with Soul Fusion. We have Thunder Dragon Colossus being around. $52, which is a little bit high in value. It's starting to go back low in value, but starting to go back a little higher in value. So I think Yu-Gi-Oh players are looking at the meta, looking at Savage Strike, and they're like, as long as Guard Dragons don't get Needle Fiber, we don't care. Like, that's the way I feel like Thunder Dragon. That's the mentality I feel like Thunder Dragon players are having. And they're right. We don't know what's going on. Normally, we know what's going on with the balance. Normally, we're given like an advanced notes of the ban. Uh, not the balance. I'm sorry. A uh, Savage Strike. Normally, we know what's going on with all of that. We have zero idea, which is really unique because we've been new what's going on with every set except this set. Konami's playing this either close to the chest or the people that are doing the leaks are getting threatened to shut the hell up. I don't know. But what I do know is. Thunder Dragon players are getting cocky, and they have the right to be cocky because we don't know nothing about needle fiber. Until we know about needle fiber, these prices are going to remain where they are. We have about about a week to know we are getting needle fiber. Less than a week, let's be honest. 
to know that whether we get needle fiber. If we do not get needle fiber, Thunder Dragon players' prices might go higher in value. They're like, oh wait, needle fiber is gone. Cool. Let's let's think of let's talk on the Thunder Dragon mentality. Big Dick Thunder Dragon plays to spend a lot of money on a Yu-Gi-Oh decks because why the hell not? Empty Wilds, big decks. Why the hell not? Well, they're getting excited about this and they want to play more and knowing the fact that if there's no Needle Fiber in the meta, they will be the best deck out there. It's a really smart move to do. Danish Tujinoko is currently roughly around 42 to 45. That's because of Burning Abyss. They're getting excited. Trap Chick's running around $22. I don't really know why, but it is. Uh, K Strike 11 Year is also around, um, this one had one at 10. There's 12. Um, this was going higher in value as well because burning up market price showing you going lower, low 45 in the market price. They seem to roughly around here for $13, so that's a thing. I don't know, it's kind of weird these price points. The other Dragon Dark is also starting to come back up to its $10 and almost to $11 to where its market price is. Like I said, guys, the other Dragon players are just getting cocky, and I don't blame them. Like, if I was a Dragon player and we're getting more and more to this new set coming out of Savage Strike, and I don't see no Needle Fiber, oh yeah, I'd be talking so much smack to everybody. Striker players, you're gonna get smacked. Alter guy players, watch out because Japanese says you look you like you're about to get hit in the dick. Everyone's getting messed up. And I'm just sitting here cruising through because I highly doubt and I and I guarantee you the price of Dun Dragon reflects Dun Dragon's players' confidence and they highly doubt that they're gonna get hit in the ban list. And they I don't think they are. I think they'll be in a Vernet hits. Maybe mainly we might maybe see a brilliant fusion hit. I think it should be instant fusion, but like those might be the hits. But as far as like Dungeon Dragons for in general, they're still gonna be meta. I think it's every Yu-Gi-Oh player realizes that. Unless we see Needle Fiber, then they're kind of fucked. Also, Salomon Greats, yeah, you gotta want to test those matchups against the Salomon Greats on Dragon players. It's uh, they're pretty good against you. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's a market watch. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, guys. Please make sure to comment below, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell button, let you know when these beautiful videos come out, because let's be honest with you, by the time you watch these videos, if you're watching it later on in the day, some of these card prices might be bought out, might have moved, so get on top of that, boys. Get running. Anyway, guys, it's your boy V. You guys have a great day, Bizanos. Take it easy.